Hi, I'm Dr Mary Carr, Chief Veterinary Officer for South Australia, and I am pleased to welcome you to the Red Meat and Wool Growth Program production brought to you by the Department of Primary Industries and Regions, Livestock SA, Animal Health Australia and the University of Adelaide. Today we are exploring the Enhanced Abattoir Surveillance Program with a focus on arthritis. Enhanced Abattoir Surveillance tracks the health conditions of sheep found at the abattoir. These findings are provided to producers to assist with planning around prevention and management of prevalent animal health conditions. Arthritis is a very common condition found in South Australian abattoirs. Over the last three years, one in three properties submitted sheep to the abattoir with arthritis, and one in seven consignment reported cases of arthritis. At the animal level, you'll find arthritis in one every 30 sheep submitted to the abattoir. From a temporal point of view, we observe a peak of arthritis cases in 2017, and since then, the frequency keeps decreasing progressively. This suggests that we have an improvement in the management of this condition at the farm level. The detection of arthritis is very different in lamb and muttons. Although arthritis is more likely to start with lambs, it is believed that the risk of arthritis accumulates with time and the age of the animal. Indeed, slaughter muttons are three times more likely to have arthritis than lambs. Also, when we look at the spread of arthritis across the state, we can see that muttons are more likely to have arthritis when they come from the northern pastoral region. However, lambs are more likely to be found with arthritis when they come from the or southeast of the state. While there is no clear seasonality in muttons, there is a very strong seasonality in lambs where arthritis is more likely to be found in lambs slaughtered in autumn. Arthritis is essentially a bacterial infection of uh, all the joints. Uh, so there's a number of different bacteria, probably half a dozen. Somewhere between 15 and 50% of all infections are caused by erysipelas, which uh, we can vaccinate against. Uh, the other most common one is chlamydia, uh, which we don't have any cure for. But they all tend to be environmental contaminants, so it's very difficult to avoid them. Uh, you just got to avoid areas where they're concentrated. So Staphylococcus, Streptococcus, other infections like that, which are normally on the skin anyway. And they attack the lining of joints and so cause inflammation and resulting in what we call arthritis. To gain access to the body, they need to get through a cut or a, um, a wet area. So for example, the navel at birth, but probably the most common uh, gain or entry to the body is at marking time. So if we had cutting off tails, cutting off um, or castrating with a knife or mulesing, uh, they're all open wounds which are, are readily uh, environmental contaminants, bacteria can gain access to the body and they'll set up an inflammation in the joints which way it may not show up for a few weeks or months after that initial entry. So arthritis uh, presents on farm as a, a lameness and so it's either in one or more legs affected because the causal bacteria localise in one or more joints and uh, so the animals will show a variable amount of lameness depending on how severely affected they are or will be euthanised because of it. Others may get through to uh, slaughter and abattoirs. So it can persist for some weeks or months uh, and may not show up for a long time until after a gained entry through a, a marking wound. You know, adult animals also affected if they've had a relatively mild lameness and, and probably missed being culled in the, in the process. From a welfare consideration, it's really the pain and suffering that um, lambs with arthritis uh, endure. Arthritis presents in all the major joints on a carcass. Polyarthritis just means many joints affected. If you get two up here and uh, two down here, or maybe three joints down here affected, we know it's become systemic, so therefore the, the entire carcass needs to be condemned. Inspectors are trained to look for any enlarged joint, abnormally enlarged joint, and they'll look for the uh, regional lymph node to see whether that's inflamed as well. The process that they need to be able to recover as many good primals as they can from a normal carcass. Once we start removing joints, the primals are devalued and therefore it's, it's of less value to them. The producer will get less money from the processor because the processor is not going to pay the, the producer 
for a carcass that he's not going to recover maximum number of primal time. A few years ago we had some enhanced abattoir surveillance data come back from the works uh, with a few lambs showing up with arthritis and we were noticing the kill sheets coming back with the odd lamb being a bit lighter so obviously they were trimming pretty hard. We did notice arthritis uh, when we were weighing lambs we found we were drafting off anything with a knuckle, front knuckle or back leg, a bit limpy. Uh, probably a few years ago we sort of, I think it, it snowballed a bit on a wet season while we were lamb marking, so we were probably getting oh, five to a hundred, so over a few thousand lambs, it soon adds up to quite a few lambs in a mob, so, and that's not counting the ones that have probably perished in the paddock at lambing, um, where they picked up the infection straight away and haven't been able to get up and suckle and, and mother up with their mother. So uh, we were losing, yeah, probably a few unknowns there as well, probably affecting lamb percentages. The condition probably costs the business probably 5% in loss production with the trimmings at the works. A bit hard to measure the losses in the paddock at, with lambing, but we've noticed an increase of probably 5 to 10% in our lamb marking percentages over the last few years. A few of the changes we've made, we're incorporating Aerovac with a, a six in one um, with a pre lamb in a pre lamb vaccination program. When we lamb mark, we use satellite sheep yards, so we only lamb mark probably 3,000 out of one set of yards just for hygiene. Stops the lambs picking up infections in the yards. We use a pallet load of hibertone and, and various different aceptols and different products through the year. So management options for dealing with arthritis is primarily to prevent uh, wounds becoming infected. The main issue is probably infection acquired during um, lamb marking procedures, uh, especially where you're creating wounds, either whether it's um, uh, open castration or detailing with a knife or a gas knife uh, or amusing. Uh, what we need to do is have all instruments sterilised and so basically soaking continuously in you know, methylated spirits or some other appropriate disinfectant. Ideally when lambs are um, dropped out of the lamb cradle onto a fresh pasture, not around uh, yards where a lot of infective organisms have accumulated over the years. So ideally move to a new site every day when you're lamb marking uh, and some people put down uh, for example old mattress for the lambs to land on just so that you're not actually exposing the wounds to um, uh, dirt infections. Lamb marking time we use a little like a trampoline set up off the side of the crate when the lamb tips out it, they sort of bounce it on that and straight on their feet they're not rolling around the dirt. Disinfect everything with a septal. During the day we splash the cradles and all guns and whether it's a tag gun any any sort of applicators dipped in a bucket of a septal every every couple of pens of lambs you know so we don't lamb mark in the paddocks that much um, out of portable yards we found in the winter times here that it can get very messy very quick on the black ground it'll it'll bog up in no time so we've got gravel pads satellite yards the yards aren't used a lot before lamb marking so they get a bit of a spell hopefully no bacteria can live in the soil that long and so we do have airy vac which is the vaccine that we can give to use prior to lambing and also you may uh, give it to the lambs at lamb marking. But unfortunately we don't have vaccines against the other five or six different causes. So uh, if you get a response to Aerovac, well and good. If you don't, well it probably suggests it's one of the other bugs that are causing the problem. The option to use antibiotics is only going to be beneficial if you've noticed a few days after lamb marking that there's a lamb, a lamb or two that are showing a bit um, a bit gingerly where they're stepping, uh, look, you know, looking like they're stepping on a hot tin roof. If you get injections into them at that stage, oxytetracycline or penicillin, there may be an advantage, but if it's um, some weeks after and you've already got swollen joints, there's really no benefit. With the enhanced avatar surveillance, you get a lot of good feedback. We can sort of address the arthritis issues. If there's any other issues like ovus or pleurisy pop up, we can um, address them as they come along as well but um, just with the data we received back with the arthritis, we've changed the way we treat hygiene on the farm, vaccinating everything um, seems to address the issue. And now arthritis is just something like one in a thousand lambs maybe we see nowadays. So if that lamb percentages are going up every year, 
um, just by monitoring what we're doing. Between 2007 and 2021, the Department of Primary Industries and Regions managed the Enhanced Abattoir Surveillance Program at Lobethal and Murray Bridge, with funding from the state and national sheep industry funds and national industry funding from Meat and Livestock Australia. It was the EAS program that provided producers with the feedback discussed in this video. Although EAS monitoring has ceased, there are plans in place to transition to entering South Australian data into the national system. This national data can inform the development and funding of appropriate industry and government initiatives on the ground to better support South Australian producers to reduce losses caused by unnecessary carcass trimming and to take advantage of premium markets. To assist producers, Animal Health Australia has partnered with PERSA to create the Sheep Health Conditions Carcass Impacts Tool, a 3D digital tool designed to show the industry what six common conditions look like on a carcass and give them an idea of how much trim may occur at the processor. Livestock SA encourages all producers to talk to their processors about what carcass and disease and condition data they can access from their consignments. Thanks for watching. We hope you have learned more about arthritis and the importance of managing sheep health with the help of enhanced abattoir surveillance. To find out more or get support with your business, contact your local animal health advisor from the Department of Primary Industries and Regions or the South Australian Livestock Biosecurity Extension Team through the Livestock SA office. The Red Meat and Wool Growth Program is an initiative of the Government of South Australia and supported by Meat and Livestock Australia, the South Australian Sheep and Cattle Industry Funds and Sheep Connect SA.